Okay, let's come to order. <coughs> Welcome to the August 29th. So look forward to it. Okay, minutes. I just uh, approved the July 26th ones if you want. Approved July 26th, August 16th. Good. Just the 26th. Just the 26th. Let's approve the 26th. Fred, if you Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. So done. Okay, scheduled appointments. 6.30, Don, Donna Wiley, Town Center Conway School Project. Donna. And Becky. And Becky. Um, Jonathan's not here tonight? No. Okay. So, um, I sent you uh, a while ago the report and the letter that we on the committee um, wrote about the report. Do you want me to review what we that with you, or do you want to start with questions? How, what would no, why don't you review it for the TV audience as well? The TV audience. Okay, the TV <laughs> audience. Um, so just to remind everyone, um, this project was funded by the CPA and we engaged the Conway School of Landscape Design. Um, we designed a committee that was representative of various functions. Um, Virginia, Larry, Virginia Alice, Larry Ashman, Keith Bardwell, Becky, Judy Markland, and me. Um, Jonathan was the select board representative. And we worked with the two students for about 10 weeks, I guess, maybe three months. Um, first they came in to just kind of get the lay of the land. We made a lot of suggestions about who they should talk with. We had two open meetings that were good, I think. Fred, I think you were at the first of the two. Um, lots of good conversation, always a mix of people who lived in the, in the district and people who didn't. That was useful. Um, and um, we got the report in the beginning of July. Um, and I. I, maybe a couple of things first about what came out of the meetings. Um, I'm just going to mention parking first because it's this big elephant and we can't avoid talking about parking. Um, the, the thing that was interesting about parking was that we had kind of a divide from people who said we want as much parking as we can possibly have for all the public buildings and people who said we don't want any more parking, in fact we want less paving in the center of town. So that actually made for some, that made for some good and interesting conversations. It might be fair to say that the people who live in the center of town wanted less parking and paving, <laughs> but I, I mean we weren't being that schematic, but I think that probably was true. Um, the major issues that emerged, and I know that I would have predicted these, um, were first of all um, stormwater runoff and drainage. I mean, I, I realize that it made sense because anybody who gets their mail at the post office there knows that if it's bad weather at all, you're in slush. I mean, for, it's really, really bad right around there because there's nowhere for the water to go. Um, traffic calming, um, a lot of concern about how fast, particularly the big trucks, go through the middle of town and where they cut the corners and that sort of thing. And then um, lighting in the sense of too much lighting. You know, we have this weird, the Waitley Inn has a couple of and very, very bright, tall um, street lights and not much control otherwise. So that was helpful. Um, and it was good to hear from some people who, I think there are a fair number of people at each of the meetings who never come to anything. <laughs> so that was you know, good, good to hear from people. Um, the report, which I have here, but we don't want to go through it because it's so detailed. I think the committee met after we received the report to uh, discuss it. Um, we think they did a great job of analysis. In fact, it was, I have to say, a much more detailed analysis about things like the grading and the sort of the substructure of the area than I was expecting. Um, the really interesting good suggestions, I believe, were prime, uh, you know, they raised the question, which I have to say would never have occurred to me, of reconfiguring the triangle at the north end of the historic district. Um, I mean, it's awful right now, and I think it's actually an interesting idea to, to make it a two-sided triangle for cars rather than three. Um, uh, that needs some more. So, um, 
it would be Christian Lane teeing with uh, with uh, Chestnut Lane. The two sided triangle. Yeah. Yeah, right, 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 right. right. Triangle. That's, a, that's a technical, <laughs> deeply, you know, high level, level math <laughs> description, you know, like this instead of like this okay, yeah. for the cars. Yeah. And this would become parking for the cemetery, which actually makes a lot of sense. So they, they took it far enough to talk with the State Department of Transportation and determine that this would be allowable because of the way the roads are classified but there's a lot more work that have, would have to be done in terms of engineering and again grading. Um, lots of us have sort of stood there thinking, well, you'd have to move the road, a little, you know, you'd have to do some things. Um, that was interesting. I think the second, from my point of view, at least really interesting idea was rather than just replacing the horrible sidewalks where they are, shifting the sidewalks so that they're between the double row of trees, rather than on the inside of it, which would be very good in terms of allowing the sidewalks to be far enough from the roots of the trees that they're not damaging the trees. Um, and it would allow some other useful things to happen as well. And then for traffic calming, um, they've simply suggested crosswalks. There's apparently a lot of um, a lot of evidence that simply seeing those, you know, pedestrians, you have to stop if there's a pedestrian sign, slows people down. Um, so you have a crosswalk at the end of the road? Yeah, they, they suggested um, five, I think, wow. altogether, just sort of lined up the way they are, yeah, really so just, um, the way they are on the road that goes into Northampton where you go past the Hungry Ghost. <laughs> no, right, I'm, right. I've, yep. forgotten, I've, I've forgotten the name of it. Some of the interior roads in Northampton. Some, um, so um, the parking, I, I, I guess um, maybe to what we didn't agree with, um, they recommended moving the Veterans Memorial over to the library ground. And the committee did not agree with that. Um, it's kind of badly placed right now. But I think the committee thinks it could just be repositioned and reoriented so right. re and set up differently. Um, they recommended um, removing the affordable housing unit to make parking, which would be uh, bad both because it's an identified structure in the National Historic District and that would be complicated, but also because it. I guess we thought as a group it would be a terrible thing to do to Melissa Caldwell, who's just bought that house, you know, and wasn't the house next to it. Yeah. You know, yeah. and wouldn't be wanting. Um, so I don't, I, I think for parking, the ideas that we thought were pretty good, and I'm doing this from memory because I'm too lazy to look at my own letter, um, were putting some parking behind the center school, which could be useful. I mean, you know, everything's within walking distance. Mm -hmm. um, putting, uh, reconfiguring the parking around the side of the library to allow more and allowing some parallel parking in front of the library. And the things that were more problematic, unfortunately, we didn't really like what they suggested around the town hall. So I don't think that's going to solve that. We came up with some, I think we sort of, looked at what they had suggested and then made some modifications so it looked like there were, it was pretty easy to add in a few more spaces without having much impact like um one the near side of the library for instance and there were ways to shuffle space around in front of the town hall that would add some more parking um, and also actually expand the park around the um, the, the memorial. memorial to make it a, a right, nicer which could place. be more. It could be more yeah. if it weren't so overgrown, um, oh, yeah. and, and that would be nice. Um, they also suggested uh, that the Waitley Inn should reconfigure their parking, and that raises a whole other set of questions. Obviously, I mean, part of their front parking is on town land, as I understand it. I mean, it must be. Yeah. But but they've been given you know the privilege of using it, so that's a whole other set of complications. Um, so there's a lot to digest in the report and we're having another open meeting in a couple of weeks. Oh, actually here I brought some extra. Some of you will come to on September 20th. Um, 
and hoping again to get good representation from the people in the district and some people without so that we just have a sense of um, so the meeting would be September 20th, which is what day of the week and where? Tuesday at, in Town Hall okay. at 7 o'clock. And where um, might people go to learn more about this on the web? Well, I, um, you'll, the report is really oddly configured. I mean, it's a huge 11 by 17 document in the, Mary Ellen's got a copy of it. Um, but it can be sent electronically. So what I did when I wrote to people in the district was to say, if you want me to send it to you, and I would send a letter to you, because I, I think some, I think it's important that people not confuse this. This is a study by an outside group. It's not our plan. And I think it's important that we keep that. And it's not costing us, or how much? Oh, well, we, no, we paid for it. Yeah. We paid $6,500 for the work. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What, could, wouldn't it be possible to put it on the website? Well, it website? would. It would. And that's really up to you. Which, or should, where would we could put it in there? Well, if we wanted feedback from people, that would be a good place um, yeah, Of course. Of course. Again, I would think we'd probably want to put the letter up, too, and sort of sure. introduce it so that we don't have... Well, if you want Particularly for the people, <laughs> the people who live in the affordable housing units. <laughs> <No. laughs> what well, you me, you have the DVD? But can you send me that electronically, the letter? I'm assuming that's what you're talking about. Or you want? To sure, 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 okay. sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I'm talking about this. Um, well, are they the scoop? I I put a little announcement little about the um, the meeting, but I decided not to go into the details in the school. Sure. Again, I just yeah. didn't know. So if we're going to have meetings, like that, you're going to have meetings September 20th, and then what's the Well, well, um, excuse me, well, hi, Keith. Hi. They were here. <laughs> well, Keith and Judy and, um, and is Fred Barron? Fred the other and were, Brian. Right, Brian, Brian, of course are working on complete streets applications. Okay. That's that's the most, I think, obvious source of possible funding for anything we want to do with the roads and the sidewalks. That would be the main thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Oh, I should have mentioned one other thing. That really interesting um, recommendations about the use of both swales and um, rain gardens, um, you know, plantings that would collect the water. And I think we've decided they're both worth looking into. I mean, the, the rain gardens require a little bit more maintenance. And um, rain. <laughs> yeah, well, I, you know, at this point, I'm hoping for snow <laughs> this year. <laughs> 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 Did they ever show any pictures of what these rain gardens would look like, or swales or whatever? From well, swales are easy. They're know, just... From other actual yeah, communities. they did. They did. Yeah, and then for the, for the rain gardens, I went over, um, I knew John Robleski had put them in his development, so I went over there. Oh, okay. He was very nice and gave me a tour on, you know, one of the hottest days of the summer. And then... Thank you, John. Yeah, over here. Hey, John. <laughs> <laughs> it was really hot, wasn't it? <laughs> and then John sent me the state guidelines for the rain gardens, okay. which are very thorough and interesting. Um, yeah, they probably look better now than they did Yeah, <laughs> when we were over there. Okay, great. Yeah, well, so, this, okay. no, no, you go ahead. This study didn't talk about cost at all for anything, right? It did not talk about cost, no. <laughs> is that coming eventually, or how, how, is he gonna, how are you going to handle all the recommendations? Um, I, what um, I've heard more from Judy and Keith is that there are, there's enough information available from other sources about what these changes would cost. And we'd have to have an engineer anyway do any, you know, do any. The assessment. I mean, th this is not an engineering study. This is from two graduate students. Right. You know, it's sort of preliminary project. What, what is the next steps after, after the September 20th? Well, there are no, I, I, that's really up to you, I think, or to the planning board, because we're an ad hoc committee. We're not, <coughs> Let, I can just elaborate. I mean, basically, what we've gotten out of the 
the proposal or the project from Conway School is, is a lot of concept ideas. They come in, they've looked at a lot of things from a non-biased, neutral, they got no... Um, agenda. Uh, agenda, right. They, it's not going to affect them one way or another. So they're looking at it from that aspect as to how we can improve our center of town. And one of the things, especially down by the Dingle, is they looked at it and they said that is so confusing for outside traffic okay. to know who has right-of-ways at the even though we have some yield signs, but also when you're heading heading north on Chestnut Plain Road, people are confused as to who has the right of way if to take a left or to, to go down into the Dingle or down, you know, so it's still very confusing for outside traffic. And the natives that know south, it pretty much yeah, know which yeah. who has the right of way there. But so they're looked at a lot of things like that and made recommendations. The governor recently has um, funded money in this program called Complete Streets, which is a statewide program which offers up to $400,000 per community to spend on making their streets complete, so to speak, which looks at all forms of, of um, transportation, pedestrian, bicycles, so forth, vehicles, all, every aspect, and they look at it. And in our case, um, we feel that we have a, a good case to get some funding for at least improving, upgrading our sidewalks. Our sidewalks were put in in the 70s with the, under the CETA program, and they're in total disrepair. I mean, they're just horrendous. Um, this day and age, um, they're not wide enough for ADA requirements. They don't meet any kind of ADA requirements for, for um, at grade you know, across everybody's driveway. There's all kinds of things like this that this program can fund for us. So what we've gotten from Conway is the first step. We can take that proposal and go sit down with an engineer and say, let's see if we can incorporate some of these ideas into a into a plan and submit it to MassDOT and we would get it funded. So the streets, uh, streets project is like an uh, of chapter 90. Yeah, it's a, it has nothing to do with Chapter 90. It's right. a separate funding that the, that the uh, Mass DOT has has funded, similar to you've probably been hearing about the um, the CRI program, which is the bridges under 20 feet. Um, there's that's another thing that's been funded in the same same go around. So that there's <clears throat> some of these other programs that the state is trying to implement. To help some of these towns out with it and, and we happen to be I feel we're in a good position to to utilize this program in the center of town not to mention the VR that also we want to pursue that too okay so do we need and like to I say we you know we elaborated a few minutes ago about the fact that um, Judy and myself and um, Fred met with Brian and we're working on a complete street aspect of things to try to formalize an application and get that rolling. But we need a little guideline from the board as to the steps they want to take. Wouldn't that isn't that fair to say, Brian? Yeah, we can decide whether we want to go ahead and do the prioritization plan or we want to take advantage of the fifty thousand dollars of technical assistance funds. Correct. Which we're not a hundred percent sure if that fifty thousand dollars would we're really eligible to do anything with it because we may have already been that step may have already been taken place by what Conway did. But we're so we're gonna find, find that out. out. We we're we're gonna get that answer. But we we can certainly say to them that we haven't had it, you know, we haven't had any engineering work done yet. Right, and we we'll prioritize that so fifty thousand dollars technically can't go towards engineering. Oh okay. really? Huh. Just design? It's they huh. call it there's it's called a prioritization plan. There's oh. a certain Brian's more familiar yeah. with that than I am. It's huh. essentially a ranking of projects that is how you would like to use the police for. I see. The, the engineering for those work. 
source, whether it's Jackanadi money or, or some other source. So it could take fifty thousand dollars to prioritize. <coughs> It seems like a lot of money to prioritize. Well, well if you're Cambridge, it, it, it could take fifty thousand right. dollars. Right. It, it includes things like um, roadway safety audits, um, yeah. paper management um, systems, um, other sort of audits or assessments. Mm -hmm. So it's not fifty thousand dollars just to put the plan down. So yeah, right. do that. Well, you probably saw in the Gazette a couple of weeks ago that Northampton has a consulting firm working with them to help them prepare their proposal for the complete streets program. I mean, right. Northampton is a much bigger town yeah. than yeah. Waitley, but maybe... And when you get into some of these yeah. cities, they're, you're talking in much more complex right. projects, so that that's where this that 50000 is much more. So are, are we doing any of the prioritization or plan for that? Is that our, one of our activities? Well, the complete streets was part of that. But no, but the, the, what's the 50000 eligible for? Because I'm thinking you know, if, if you did have that, would that give you more support to apply for the you know, 400000 You could show whatever is our top priority in town. Not, I don't think Brian and I really got a clear answer to that yet, do we? No, we had mentioned about say, checking with the engineering I was firm. Try, and I, that's the last conversation we had, is I was going to contact an engineering firm to see if they felt that it would be beneficial for us to go after that 50000 So maybe at our next meeting we could get more information about where, sure. what our options are, where we could go. Could have, I can have more information. Okay. Than, but for, for that intersection there, North Street, do we have, or has there ever been any traffic data available to know? Counts. Counts, yeah, who's oh, taking yeah. which movements and all that? Yes. Okay. Have there been many accidents there? I, I don't know anything serious. I know there's been some you know, minor stuff. But and you're plotting our misses. Oh, I Is know that. that. Yesterday? <laughs> it's yeah, it, I mean, people will not, don't signal to yeah. the left. They just don't. I was staring at a woman. I was on my bicycle staring at her. I stopped because I knew she wasn't going to signal. And she didn't. She just looked at me and went right down. So, oh. yeah. Well, yeah. it's actually even worse if you're coming south from North Road. Uh -huh. And you want to that turn on a Christian yeah. lane. Yeah. I mean, I stopped. There's, there's oh, nothing right. there. Yes. There's yes. nothing to indicate yep. I should stop or even slow down. Yep. And I'm not hugely tall, but I'm not short either. I literally could not see <laughs> in it's either direction. Yeah. 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 Well, in either direction. Yeah. I'm amazed we haven't had more accidents. Yeah. Okay. Well, that sounds good. Good. Yeah. Good report. Project. It was interesting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. they did have some uh, interesting little pearls, like like that one, especially. And some really bad ideas. But we talked <laughs> no, about no. them. <laughs> well, we'll get we'll get the information out to the public via the uh, website. And It'd be good to have that. Maybe we'll get some feedback from yeah, you I all think, out there. I think that would be. But yeah, if it could be featured on the home page, would be better than burying it. Sure. On one of the yeah. pages. Yeah. And include just how this works and where. The future might be, uh, i.e., how much the taxpayers might have to shell out for, or, or not, or not, or not. But I think eventually, from all of this, I would like to see some recommendations as far as uh, priorities of, of what should what the committee thinks should be done, rather than leaving it up to the us. three of us <laughs> or or Which your we, Ed we public on meeting. That a little bit. I feel that we we have. Right. Wouldn't yeah. everybody here agree that we, yeah, we, we did touch on it? Let's, let's go to the committee and something that's here. We have a much more formal, yeah. Yeah. formal yeah. recommendation. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. We, you, we had some really good feedback from the participants, and then we, I think we were able to distill it. Right. And, um, okay. uh, yeah, I think, I think we were able to get it. And then there's the next public meeting. Yeah. Right, and I, wanna, I might actually knock on doors because the people I, unless I, I don't recognize everybody, but we didn't have the people who live closest to the three, the triangle. And it would be really great. Yeah, yeah. 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 All yeah. right, so uh, yeah. interested so people the out there, the September 20th at the town hall. At right. what time? 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock. All right, well, thank you very much for your work. You're welcome. Um, Keith, are you going to make a report tonight, or, or? Um, really, I'm just at the moment. All I have is to 
will uh, be part of the discussion about the elementary school trees. Oh, okay. Okay, good. Because I have one more item I'd like to talk with you okay. when we get there. But meanwhile, we have 7 o'clock and we're a little early, if that's all right, for you 7 o'clockers. Mm -hmm. Are we missing? Are Lynn, Patty, and Bob's here. And Mr. Skrosky from the school committee. And Mr. Skrosky. Can you guys move up for... Sorry, Patty. I didn't see. Can you move up for the camera? Okay. Okay. Well, it's it's somebody's turn. It's either Lynn, Patty, or Bob, or Don's turn. Can I just can I just interject real quick? Interject. So I've asked that I've asked uh, them to come here tonight to talk about well, really two and a half things, three things. One would be the Green Communities Grant for the energy control measures Good. at the school. The other one, if there's any lingering questions about the central office relocation, this is our chance. And thirdly, the discussion about the the trees. Okay. So those are the three topics. That Should we take them in order? Green community. Good. Green community. Thank you. I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Lynn Carey, and I'm the superintendent oh, of nice schools. To meet you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm the new superintendent yeah. of schools, and so I appreciate being here and, and talking with you. Uh, we did get, we did receive a grant. Patty and Bob Lesko, Don will talk about it, and. Um, our folks for that, and then I'll, I'll talk about the uh, central office. Oh, good to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Pat. Good evening, gentlemen. Um, so we did. You, the town of Wheatley, secured a green communities grant for about hundred thousand, hundred thirty thousand dollars which um, we took our bales report, which we had a study done, yep. um, and we went out to bid for an energy management system, not knowing what this was going to cost today based on when the bales report was done. Sure. Um, we got we only received one bid and it would total seventy four thousand, which was much under what we expected. Um, so we do need um, a vote from you for because it is the town of Wheatley's money to award that contract to Conservation Through Control Inc. out of Adams Mass. Secondly, we would like to ask you if we could expand the scope now of that project to do a few more items on the EMS and possibly with the other 50,000 that's available, do an LED lighting project at the school as well, which is uh, also something we've been wanting to do. We did the lights about five years ago, but you know how fast technology That was changes. replacing them with T8s. With what? T8s. Yes. <laughs> So um, we, the bid came in low. We only had the one bid, um, so we'd like to award that. And with the additional 56, expand the EMS project um, and also possibly think of having an LED lighting project done, if that would be to your... Oh, I love LEDs, <laughs> given that they use about a fourth of the power of the TAs. I'm guessing about that, but it's a savings if we use a lot of light. We do. So, that sounds reasonable to me, but I would defer to you guys, Bob, if, uh, or Fred, if, you know, to you. Why, why the big difference? You had about 130,000, I guess, and they came in at 74. Is that 74 everything that you wanted, or is this going to be a hey, hey, short change? We, we took the Bales report and okay. outlined everything that he had recommended and sent out a request for proposal. Um, and I personally asked three companies to bid on it. I'm surprised only one of them came back and did it. I will say that the one company that did come back and bid it um, is the same company that originally put the energy management system in the regional high school. And I've had a long-term uh, working relationship with them. Uh, and they're good people. So, you know, they've summarized what, what they put in the project. So. I think what happened is the Bales report was assuming we were going to hire a design engineer and go through the whole full design process and all of those associated um, costs. And by putting the package together ourselves, um, I think we just ended up saving a lot of money. And I think the timing was good and the bid environment was good. And this particular contractor wanted the job. So I'm relatively confident that we've got a good contractor and a good bid. And he has suggested already another five to ten thousand dollars in enhancements to the project that if we can get them through on the green communities, I'd like to see us do also. But it's going to be a nice little project for the school. Are you checking where his references were? 
Um, I know of some other places where he's been working, yes, so I will double check um, and call some other customers. I think the best reference I have for him is he's been working for me for some time at the high school and doing an okay job. He still does work for us at Frontier. We're doing a unit ventilator uh, uh, project that we've planned over five years, and he's been the, the bidder, uh, the awarded bidder for those five years. So he's been, we've been working with him for about, what, six years now? So, so the uh, LED replacement would run about, what did you say, five or seven? Fifty. I, honestly, uh, the, the LED replacement, you know, basically it was put to me just bef very shortly before this meeting, oh, okay. was there other things that we could do? I've had other projects <coughs> that I've been looking at in other schools, and we've got some pricing um, on replacing the T8s with LEDs, and technology has moved fast, and I think that's a good project. Um, I don't, unfortunately, I don't have the numbers yet, okay. but I'm sure if we did the entire school, including the site lighting, we could end up with a menu of projects that would fit the remaining amount of money. And, and if we don't spend the remaining amount of money, that, what, what happens to that? Well, I, I posed that question. Our contract with you, we are ends at the end of the calendar year. It can be extended, but there's, I, there's also a sort of desires to apply for a green communities grant for the town hall as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, do we think that doing the LED lighting project could be done by the end of the calendar year? Yeah. Um, if, 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 yes, I think we could get it done that quick. Um, it's, it's really, again, there's, there's, <coughs> one or two, there's one or two vendors, um, primarily Universal Electric, that done a ton of stuff for us in the schools and they're pretty actively engaged in that program and they get stuff done pretty quick. So I wouldn't be surprised if we could put it together and have it done. I'd like to, I'd be interested to see if, you know, what the options are for that remainder of the funds and what the paybacks are for the various options so we can compare from an energy and, and revenue standpoint what seems to be the most effective way to go. And I, I would guess the LED, uh, the LED replacement would be a very quick payback. Yeah. Judy. Brian was, was very good about catching up on the deadline. The, this grant has already been extended once. I'm not sure it can be extended again. But not only does it have to be done by the end of the year, but this report, year? Calendar. 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 Oh. But reports have to be filed and accepted by the state before the town can submit another grant. So, so its timing is is very, is very, very critical. Is it possible to develop some options for our next meeting? So we could When's your next meeting? I think I could. I'm, I'm hoping. I'm not positive, sure. but the one contractor that I've been using, if I go to Universal Electric. I'm guessing, you know, they've been very aggressive about these types of projects. Yeah. And yes, I can probably come back and do okay. it, so it's a better number. And but what was the other project you mentioned, Patty? Just expanding the EMS, as oh, you, okay. you know, um, what we outlined for the bidder. Um, he's already come back and recommended another six to ten thousand. With an extra six to ten thousand dollars, we could have like, you know, the the cream of the crop. Like, you know, just a few more bells and whistles and a few more areas to help us with the energy conservation. So, so most of it is splitting it up into zones that can be separately controlled correct. on an automatic basis. Exactly. Um, so we could add that to the project scope and then quickly get a, you know, get an yeah. idea of how much LED lighting we can get in two weeks. And then we could turn around and get that bid out um, definitely back by after the end of October. They could work November, December, and we'd be done. And Bob, is this an outdoor reset kind of system? Ba basically, what, the, what they're doing is, is like one of the things you mentioned, is a zone control of the air handling units. That's but, VAB? Um, Variable air it, It's not VAB, no. Okay. It, basically, it's, it's taking over the conventional control strategy. They'll be using um, direct digital control. Okay. Um, and actually, you've got me thinking now, one of the things we might have them look at is not VAB, but van speed control, oh, yeah. um, which is not something that uh, that Mark Bales suggested, but it is something possibly worth looking at. Oh, he should. Um, so beyond that, 
you know, we're, we're, we, there's, there's, I think there's five major air handling systems. We're replacing all of the controls. They're doing direct digital control. There is about, there's a number of, uh, there's 14 feet. See, that, that's not a, uh, a variable air volume system. What it's got, it's got reheat coils downstream in, yeah, yeah. in the ductwork. And he's proposed, <coughs> the, the proposal is for direct digital control of 14 brand new reheat control valves. Um, and so, and then on the on the air handlers themselves, they'll do control of the coil valves on those, they'll do control of the damper motors, um, they'll do temperature readouts of the different air streams, and they'll do temperature readouts of the zones in the school. So it, it, it'll be a nice little system. The two ads that he is recommending is um, being able to discuss the boiler valve yeah. um, and then uh, getting a price for a solar sensor that would tie into the system and it would work with our exterior lights so it turns them on and he wrote at duck, but I'm sure he meant dusk, um, <laughs> ever changing and, and doing the scheduled overrides uh, to the system for using solar instead. Bas basically what they've got is a time clock control on the lighting that went in with the initial bid. And he's suggesting that if, if we use the photo cell um, with, the, with this control, we can actually measure the resistance of the photo cell. And in addition to the time clocking, do a more precise okay. uh, yeah. control of the light. May I ask a question? Sure. I, I, I may not make it point out that I'm not sure one of you said this, but has someone spoken with the program officer to make sure that they're amenable to having a definition of the grand change at this point? The pro which program manager? Well, someone <coughs> someone in the state is the contact uh, person Brian, for that. Brian, Brian yeah. resubmitted for us. If, if there are add-ons, I'll need to run those by here we are. Right. We have approval for what uh, for what was submitted in the bid package. If there's add-ons, we're going to need to get those approved. And certainly, if there's going to be um, LED lights installed, mm -hmm. we'll need to get those changes approved as well. But they would probably be amenable to that as long as we use the funds for the same purpose and get it to work done by December. Okay. That's it. Fine. Uh, Fred? Yeah, I'm a little confused. The money you're asking for it on this one page bid form we got here, she talks about contract price EMS systems items 1 through 12, 73,780. It says alternate one, deduct from items 10 through 12, 32,500. Is that deducted from the 73 or, or? If we initially, we had expected with the original Bales budget for the project to come in much higher. Yeah, so I, I had asked them to bid a deduct in case we didn't have enough money in the grant. And it turns out we've got more than enough money. So if we had decided to do the smaller project, which would have been just time clocking the air handling unit, as opposed to doing, as opposed to doing the um, direct to control of all of the control com com um, components, we could have taken the deduct and at some later date added that back in to, to get control of everything. But we've got more than more than enough money um, in the grant to do the entire project. So you're asking for 73780 That's right. And the other doesn't matter. Because you're not Correct. Matter. We, it was just it was a bidding um, it was just a bidding uh, methodology just in case so we wouldn't have to go out so if, they, if the whole project came in at 150 yeah. and we only had 130 we would have had to then rebid it with some items taken off so we bid it um, with items one through ten and then price it as an alternate if we have to take off items ten and twelve. It's been a while since I've seen the Bales report, but was there any solar or electric? No. The, 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 Bales kept his report relatively simplistic, and his two major um, recommendations um, in the high school were for the energy management system and replacement of the school's boilers with a uh, condensing propane fire boiler. Um, and that project was a little bit more money than the grant had available. And also, from my perspective, I was slightly uncomfortable with it in that I would much prefer us do it with the natural gas service that's there. Sure. But right now there's a problem adding to natural gas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it really, it, it wasn't the better of the two projects. Uh, you know, I, I suggested, you know, that one I think is, is something we ought to wait on. 
Okay. And also, if it's a if it's a replacement of an HVAC system, we can go for a grant through the uh, Massachusetts School Building Authority um, and get a bigger match than what um, than oh. what this could grant could probably uh, possibly provide. Okay. Good. All right. So just quickly, are, are you looking for, for the board to approve the the seventy three seven eighty or the seventy three seven eighty plus those add-ons? Um, I think we tonight we'd like to have a vote to award the contract as as bid uh, as bid um, so that we can get going on that okay. and then um, we'll get the information for the um, the LED project and the two add-ons for you to pass through the state and then get an approval at that point for us to keep going with this great okay well so we okay, that's so fine. you I, I move that we we Go ahead with the 73 as we just discussed. 378, okay, I second it. Okay, in favor? Aye. Okay, great. Good work. Thank you. Thank you. And that brings us to central office, which I imagine <coughs> is. Uh, Hi. Hi. Again, I'm Mike Carey, and yes, uh, we uh, Brian had come to my office, and I had given him I had given him some information on the uh, the subcommittee that was formed, and the decision that the subcommittee made uh, when we were looking at different uh, different locations to move our office. And essentially, what um, the committee we, the committee when we lined up the. Um, the only other location we had was the, the high school facility right. and Frontier Regional. And when we lined it up with the Waitley Town Hall, uh, the biggest thing that came out was the, the, the 2,600 feet, the 2,600 square feet, square feet versus the 4,500 square feet we would get at the high school. It just, it was a smaller location. Yep. And there's uh, 12, 12, 13 people working within the office, and we really kind of needed to have all of them together. They come kind of as a unit. So we, uh, we put that together with some other issues, some other things that the rooms were available at the high school, and um, you know there wasn't going to be a lot of build out involved. Um, can I add one more thing about the financial aspect of it? Um, if they, by going, one of the things that we looked at is that Frontier, we already own, and the towns pay for Frontier through the assessment process for the operating costs. The towns are also billed separately for the operating costs of 219 Christian Lane. And if we moved to the Waitley Town Hall, we would have rent in perpetuity. This town. This, this town. town this town hall. So by doing, <clears throat> by not rent, by not trying to renovate 219 Christian or coming to this brand new town hall, it's going to lower the assessments to the towns because we're, we're now we're sure. going to eliminate uh, some costs. Yeah. So there'll be some savings to all four towns by not having a perpetual rent payment or asking for capital to repair 219 Christian. Okay. But you're not comparing to zero because there is some cost for that space at Frontier. But you're already paying for that through the Frontier assessment. So it, it eliminates one assessment for a building. Just curious, what's the assessment for at Frontier? What kind of rates are they? Do you know? It's a, it, the, the total cost of the building gets assessed by the, the five-year rolling. Right. Is it by the square footage, by offices? We're not. Gonna, there's going to be no cost. It'll just. We're just going to operate within the Frontier budget. Well, that certainly makes sense from a taxpayer's point of view. When will this happen? Well, right now, we've got approval to move on that recommendation. We're, uh, we have a timeline, but um, at the next joint committee, the joint school committee meeting, we're going to put forward um, the costs involved so everyone is on the same page, so they understand how much it's going to cost to literally move you know, the equipment that we have and um, all the files. And so I'm looking at a Christmas uh, holiday week when school's out, moving there. It's starting, uh, opening up uh, January 2nd. What are you going to do with that building? We have some uh, some plans. We, we still need the building for uh, the 
foreseeable future, uh, we need to uh, contract with uh, an abatement uh, company that would be able to help bring up the files and uh, clear them up and clean them up and bring up all the things that are stored within the cellar so that we can organize them in records that go back a hundred years and so we can keep what we need and have it available for use by the, uh, the central office if they need it and um, get ourselves on a schedule where we just you know we destroy or get rid of uh, files that we don't need as the uh, as we every seven years comes along right now there the cellar is just full of old files old papers boxes and boxes and file cabinets of records that we, we just don't need so there's still a lot of work to be done in the building and one of the sources of funding that we were going to use is uh, prior to my arrival and i believe even mr lesko's uh, there had been a five-year plan where the towns um, were contributing money to rehab 219 Christian Lane, and there's about $39,000 still in that fund, and we were going to use that to help us relocate, but our attorney says that we have to go back to the towns and ask permission. So we're going to be sending that letter to Brian for your consideration to repurpose those funds from repairing the current central office to moving the, the current central office. Uh, so those letters will be going out to all the, to the four select boards. So once uh, files and whatnot are moved, that building sits there vacant? Yeah. Well, that will be the storage site. Yeah. We're always going to have to keep seven years of records. So that will be the storage site. So you're used to it as a storage site? Yes. yes. For record, for all the, the records. And, and there are uh, masses and masses of records in the cellar that need to be kept. So the savings to the four towns by not using that building are, they're still going to have to pay to keep the building, right? Well, we own the building. You own the building, right? So we're just going to keep it at minimal. We'll just keep minimal utilities on right. and, and minimal insurance and things uh, like that. Between three and five thousand dollars a year. A year. Okay. Uh, just right. to keep it safe and standing up. Until we figure out what else we're going to do with it. <laughs> um, insurance on vacant buildings is changing considerable because we looked at that with the buildings we have and you're going you're going in the tens of fifteens of thousands of dollars. Insurance a on a vacant building, yes. So yeah. 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 So that's something we're gonna to need to check into with the yes. insurance carrier. All right. Well, any other comments about office relocation? If more space did come available here before you moved said still would you consider that or not we put the subcommittee back together and again line them up side by side and uh, it's really it was the subcommittee's decision we had an ad hoc committee and it we decided just basic <coughs> side by side we'd have to put it together and uh, right now the uh, the joint committee did uh, did vote to um, rec you know to go with our recommendation to I would, it, I could present it back to, you know, back to the, and to get the subcommittee back together and bring it to the joint school committee and talk about it. I just, I just um, it, it seems like if we were charging $8 a square foot for 2,500 square feet, uh, that would be $20,000 a year. And if your insurance costs exceed that, you might consider storing it here. Mm -hmm. thing is, you know, that would give us a source of income. You could store your books here. It's more, you know, environmentally stable, certainly. And then we could get rid of that building altogether. That's a great idea, Mr. Newman. Yeah, okay. that's, an, that's an excellent idea. It's certainly something that we, we would really want to be thinking about. Okay. So, how, how does this move into Frontier fit in with, I understand there was a space needs or, you know, what you call it, uh, Reorganization study, whatever, of all the, the frontier and the four elementary schools in, in each of the towns. Uh, and UMass was part of the deal that was looking at that. Is this fit in with their recommendations, or what, where is that study? Is that is that is that affecting this, or what's happening it's with that? It's not affecting. It's not affecting that, but 
whatsoever. But Patty can speak to the UMass study. No, it was not taken. In my piece with the subcommittee it was not taken into. We haven't received anything from UMass, and it's it's on. Um, it's something you know. Dr. Carey has only been here since July 1st, and she's been getting acclimated. Um, and it's something on our to-do list to to get in touch with UMass and say, where are you with this? You've been to the towns, you've talked to the towns. Where's our report? Because we have not received anything. Now we haven't paid for anything yet either, but we have not received their report. So we we need to get we need to get be in contact with them and say. You need to be forthcoming, or, or give us a timeline of when we can expect this report. Okay. All right. Good. Thank you. And now we can move on to the last item on this part of the agenda: the Whiteley Elementary School trees and future screening. I believe it's Mr. Bardwell's. Yeah, I can. I'll start with this. Um, a week ago, after I got back, um, I met with Chris Frank, who is a arborist, CL Frank out of Northampton. And I asked him his uh, professional opinion in regards to um, the status of the remaining trees. Um, all of the pine trees are somewhere in the vicinity of 20, like three. There's between the, some oak and pine that are closest to where the barn was. They are definitely all need to be removed. They will not come back. They're, the large oak that's more or less over in the direction of the cafeteria he recommended that we do nothing with it at the moment, wait and see how, what it does in the springtime and then decide from, from there. But it, um, he said the oak trees are pretty resilient. He feels that that tree is healthy enough it would bounce back on its own. It may need a little um, pruning in the springtime when we see just how much, how, how serious the, the damage was done to that tree. But. So that's that, 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 and that also at that point in time, he suggested that, that I contact David Hawkins from Urban Forestry Solutions out of, I believe, Pelham, Mass. He, um, his business in Urban Forestry Solutions, he's, he does lots of things like provide estimates for insurance purposes. Um, he would come in and prepare an estimate at which point in time that would be, you know, if you wanted to go, if we want to go the route of submitting a claim with the insurance company to get this work done. Um, also, um, there's been a lot other discussion in regards to the fact that when the, while the barn was there, it acted as a excellent screening to the to the surrounding agricultural field. Now that that barn is gone, and the trees that are no longer there, uh, any Thing that takes place, especially the agricultural sprays and things of that nature, if they're done during the timing when there's kids outside and around and the wind's blowing right in that direction, all those um, agricultural sprays and and or dust is going to be um, blowing yes. could blow right into the school's area. So we've already been experiencing some of the dust already. Yeah. I, I read this part of your email with great concern because, as you know. Uh, my son uh, had cancer, and he did a lot of. He spent a lot of time next to a potato field, you know, on somewhere in Waitley, and I could never ascertain if there was any cause and effect. But he was at this daycare center for a couple of years, um, and they did a lot of spraying. And so I read this and I go, "Well, gee, that doesn't sound very good. If they're spraying the fields and the kids are exposed to these chemicals." Why yeah, are we spraying the fields with chemicals that might injure the kids? They're all, yeah, I'm, I'm assuming that what takes place is all um, approved by the, you know, the proper agencies. Well, but, I'm not so sure. Well, okay, but what I'm getting at is the barn, when the barn was there, it provided a very <coughs> solid barrier to that field. I mean, there are other fields around, yeah. but this spot right now is, is very vacant. Also, the discussion came about well maybe the the property owner would be interested in selling it and I spoke to them and they are potentially interested in selling it that could move the barrier even further that would also open up the possibility if the town wanted to um, expand the parking lot as we all know that when there's functions there 
traffic gets parked out all the way out onto um, Long Plain Road up and down. Um, it could easily um, add on a little bit more parking and still provide space to reestablish a screening of some sort. They've, I have some recommendations as to what they would recommend to plant there, um, but again, the direction I need right now is do we want to hire, because it's at the moment from what I have gotten from this Urban Forest Solutions, David Hawkins, he doesn't, what he comes in and provide is not free. I thought, I was hoping to have an estimate um, from him, I'm at, it's somewhere in the vicinity of 600 to thousand dollars to prepare an estimate. If we go the route of the insurance, that's, that's where I'm coming to you to seek direction and how you want to handle it. If the insurance company comes in and we, by the time we put in a new um, screening, it's going to exceed the town, at least the town's threat, um, deductible. Does that mean that we're better off hiring a contractor to do it instead of doing the, the work myself? I can come in there and start tomorrow if I needed to. I can rearrange my schedule, but if you told me you, I needed to do it immediately, I can rearrange my schedule and I can get those trees down. It's not a problem, but at the same point in time, if, the, if we're going to exceed a insurance deductible and there's then, then it might be just as well to have someone else do it. Right. These are the things that I need answers to before I can go any further. Well, I don't have an answer to that question. Okay, so the insurance deductible. I don't know what that is. Our insurance would be $1,000. $1,000. But would the insurance pay for this, I guess, plan that they would develop, right, to remove the trees and do screening is what you're talking about? They, they're well, charging the 600 to 1000 Would the insurance pay for that? No, we have a $1,000 well, deductible. Well, that would be under our deductible. Well, the insurance yeah, will, will one way or another you're going to pay. Yeah. The insurance will pay for the tree removal and the reestablishment of the screening. A natural screening or? Yeah. Can I ask another question, Mr. Barber? Sure. sure. Um, yes, if you're in contact with the owners, um, we have been having some problems with dust. That I'm not a farm girl, but I, I, it's my understanding that we're done with seasons. Could you ask them to put some rye down so that it would might control the dust? Right. The, the piece of property that the uh, that the barn is on was is a very tiny, but that area, yes, it could I suppose could be seeded down that little piece. Correct. But I don't um, think that's where the dust is coming from. Oh yes, it is. I, I was there today, and a south wind came up, and the dust came right okay. from that area. It's all man. If you were over there, you'd see that. Uh, the idea of rye is fine if you have water. You do have the capability to do that because there are hydrants there. We do have a, a water wheel at the school that could be used to irrigate the, the, the rye to get it started. It would also be beneficial to know, you know, if the trees were going to be removed right away, that area the trees could be dropped onto yes. where that barn was. So yeah. um, it, if we, if the trees are going to come out of there ASAP, I would recommend get the trees out first and then put the rye on in a couple of days afterwards. So that I would estimate if, if I was to come in there and do the tree work in one to two days, the trees would be down and out of there, down to a stump level. But um, if you opt to go the route of having a contractor come in, well then I'm gonna to have to find out when that could take place. But you're gonna the only thing I want you to realize is to have a screening put in, you're gonna exceed the you're deductible. gonna be over the deductible. So any the any time any any money I spent spend there in a sense is not reimbursable. I, I guess I would like to see something come from the school, a recommendation on what the school thinks we should do with that land, w with that area, whether it's to buy land and get some kind of price and some kind of screening or whatever, and make a proposal to us what you think should be done. Keith is the only person going to ease, ease the door. He's going to.
do it with his people, but I think it's important that the school get involved and the school think about it, decide what's best for you. Is there really a need for parking? Yeah, we hear more parking. That's great, I'm not opposed to that. And if that's a uh, serious consideration, then get us a price of what you think it would be to purchase the land. And then you put the new screening on the land, if that's what you agree to. And I think you should be involved in picking out the screening. You're going to look at it more than anybody else in the room. So, uh, Paul, that's my, my thought. Yeah. We should hear back from the school. I think so, too. So what, what are options for screening? The, the, the recommendation that came from Chris Frank was Arbor or something? No, it was a, uh, a type of pine tree. It was similar to what's there is what's going to, the soils that are there is pretty sandy, need to oh, be. Okay. Um, it was a, I don't remember, a Festigia, I think, yeah, Festigia pine tree. Uh, he said it's a, a much denser pine tree. He actually sent me some pictures. I forgot to bring them with me, but they're very dense. They don't have the space in between the branches that, that a normal white pine has. So. Oh, yeah. Um, or a bank of solar collectors. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I agree that that would be good. I you know I uh, we could I can work with the school. We can get this something um, hashed out pretty quick. But again, I, I really think the first first situation is to, from the from an insurance side of thing. Are we going to? Uh, I don't see that we can't. I don't see that it can be replaced. The screening can be replaced for less than a thousand dollars. Okay, so I mean, my my concern would be to do the right job and save taxpayers <coughs> as much money as possible. The best of both worlds. I don't know. Another thought, and I don't deal with insurance companies. Would they consider any work that we do as like payment in kind or type of things? Can I just make a recommendation? Sure. Um, in my experience. Um, I would have them come out and survey, and like, you, like you do, you get an estimate when you get in a car accident, right. they come out, they'll tell you what they will cover, what they won't cover, yes. and then once you know what that is, then we can make some decisions. Yeah. We have a school right. committee yeah. meeting on the on Monday, the, if that's the 12th, well, yeah. um, and we can have well, Keith come to that right. meeting, um, and we can discuss it and come back to you. Right. Well, whatever's well, blowing around there now, it, you're not going to solve immediately. I mean, it's going to take months and to plan something. So I think we've got several months here to figure this out. And the other thing that's come to my attention on that, that we need to check with the insurance company. And I don't know if how close you looked at the school, but there was burning embers on the school roof, on the metal roof. And so that would have to be inspected by somebody or tell the insurance company to have an inspector come look at the roof, whether it needs replacement or painting or, or whatever they need to do on the roof. I mean, it's not visible when you're in the driving in the parking lot, but I think if you get closer, you may see something. I put a call in today for someone to come out and inspect the roof. Okay, that's and good. And also, um, for, for what it's worth, I'm very much a fan of uh, Keith's proposal that we wait and, and do the trees right, right. Um, and yes. check, you know, really spend some time investigating the site before we move forward. But one of my questions is, is in the very short term, um, between now and next week when the kids come back, um, do we want to try to put up a snow fence or something to keep the right. kids out? These are the things that I was waiting to, to find out how quick something's going to happen there. So no what? I think the quicker we get the insurance out here, they can tell us if they'll pay for temporary fencing until yeah, right. So the quicker we get them out here, and, have, and why should we pay for the roof inspection if they're going to pay for that? Because if Keith uses his if Keith uses his time and his and his to take those trees down, and the insurance company then says, "Oh, I can't reimburse you. You already did that." Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've had conversations with our with our um, I don't know, it's like the most claims adjuster. His, his name's Tom uh, Tom Donaldson, and I. I asked him if he wanted to send somebody out, and he said, in these situations, he said, no. He said, just take the trees down, um, and then it says the invoice, and they'll pay. They'll pay the invoice minus our deductible, and the same for the screening, as long as it's under $100,000, which it should be. No, um, no, no, no. They will pay it because he said they sent somebody out, and they look at the trees, and they say they're dead, and yeah. it, it comes down. So then we may not need to pay for this 
or than David Hawkins, because what he's preparing is if the insurance company is saying, no, we're not going to do that, or because the other thing that wasn't known was whether or not the property owner's insurance was going to get involved. Um, That's another question. Um, we're still don't know. Okay, so we got a couple of questions to um, answer before we proceed, and I hope we could answer them in the next week. Yeah, Don. Well, I think part of the question would be, too, whether or not they pay for the replacement of the trees. Right. The insurance. Well, our insurance, the removal, yes. but also the replacement. Yes. Our insurance will pay yes. for the replacement. Oh, okay. yes. I didn't hear you say that. Yeah. And then it's up to the insurance companies, ours and the owners, to fight out. It's just like a car accident. Yeah. Then they fight it out between the two of them as to, you know, does the owner owe the town back any money? Well, that we should clarify before yeah. we proceed. And, and clarifying that, then I think we should proceed immediately. <coughs> so find that out and then we can have Keith do what needs to be done and um, plant some trees and I don't know about the rye idea, it sounds good to me, keep the dust down. Oh, God, there was a trick in here. <laughs> oh, so yes, that sounds okay. good. So, so the thought is, just so I can, just so I can have these down concretely, um, in terms of the tree removal, our next steps are. Well, it sounds to me like we remove the trees because the insurance company will. I mean, we can do that oh, right away. Yeah. The insurance, do you want me to go in there at the town's expense or knowing you can't, you won't, you won't get reimbursed? Or can we, could we ask the our insurance company if I remove them, would they take that in like lieu of the. Okay, we could ask that. Because that that cost alone, I I can tell you is is over a thousand dollars. Okay. Just to take them down. Your, your expenses. Your staff. My, my expenses. Yes. Your time. So what, my question is then to the insurance company: Would they consider that uh, a reimbursable expense? Reimbursable okay. expense okay. towards yes. or in lieu of in lieu of our having to pay the thousand dollar deductible. Okay. Yeah, John. Can I have a comment? So I think I would think the insurance company would look at that from a safety standpoint, similar to when there's a a water damage situation or something, you mitigate the circumstances to make it safe. And I think with the kids coming back, I would hope they would look at that as like an emergency thing that's going to be done to mitigate what's there now and make it safer. No matter who does it. I'm going back to school tomorrow. When are the kids coming back? Next Tuesday. Oh, so we have some time. It's a week, yeah. Ryan will ask that question. Right. If they say, if they say no, it's if if your if your staff today it would cost over a thousand dollars. Is what you're talking. Mm -hmm. So in that case, it would be cheaper to use the insurance. Get somebody in there to do it. Yeah. yeah I, I guess, and, and I would I would say go ahead. Okay. Do you agree? Yeah. It's, it's only a it's matter of getting the trees down and their roots out of there, too, so you can replant. You know, disposing of the roots is a uh, cost involved for that. Sure. I think that for the replanting, in back to my recommendation to the school, is to decide which, what you want to do in that area. And Brian, you might want to check into the emergency procurement laws so that you, if they, you don't have, you may not have to go out to bid to have the trees removed. Yeah. All right, interesting cops. All interesting. So that we get the trees removed, and then we'll take a step back for the screening and work with the school yeah. on seeing what is appropriate for the screening. Sounds good. Is that the plan? Yes. Okay. okay. Everybody happy? Good. Thank wow. You. Excellent. Okay. Well, thank you so much. And again, nice to meet you, Dr. Carey. Thank you. Welcome to our little town. Yeah. It's lovely. Good. Where, where have you come from? I'm originally from Chickabee, Mass. Ah, I've driven by Chickabee. Be in your hand. I want that way. I've been a lot of kibasa or two there. Yeah. <laughs> well, good. Yes, I, I spent the last 20 years um, in New Hampshire. Oh, that's where I teach now. Oh, really? Keen. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Well, it's nice. Yeah. So you're going to relocate here? Closer. I have um, a retired 
chalky potato fields. I have a condo uh, on Mill Village Road, which is right across the street from, you know, and of course I was there one day and they were spraying. And all, and, oh, yeah. all of a sudden I, you know, I could feel, you know, in my mouth. And, we city girls, we don't know about these things. Yeah, well. I don't either, that's the problem. Interestingly, when we have both the state and the industrial hygienist look at the central office building, the spray from the field came up as a contributing factor to some of the issues with the complaints that were coming from the occupants there. I, I couldn't find anything about anything. I tried to find out what, what people were putting on the fields. And it's <laughs> proprietary information. And if there's one thing I know, it's interesting to me that on the school properties themselves, we're very highly restricted by the state for of course our, are. our integrated pest management program. Yeah. Of what we can use and what we can't use. We can essentially use nothing, but the people right next door to us are, are not. Um, at well, all. if I were on the school committee, I'd be concerned. I was on the school committee. But it applies to Early Park, too, as, as well. We've got open fields on both sides. Yeah. We've done what we could. We had the state help us, and we did some testing. But those are very hard things to identify at the level. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, you got into a, what, what was that, a civil action, that yeah. that novel? Yeah. About Woburn. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think that was the name of it, a civil action. It was, yeah. a civil action. <laughs> right. And that was chasing the stuff is, air, is airborne. That, that creates, that goes from one property to another is airborne. So you'd have to be doing your testing at the time of... When it's happening. You yeah, can't just come in and do a soil sample out in the middle no, of the not a soil sample. Because they that's not going to... They do have instruments for air testing. But all the testing we've had done at Central has been inconclusive. Yeah. And the, so one of the problems at Central Office is that the only ventilation we have is opening the windows. So we <laughs> open the windows and in comes the dust and then everybody with asthma gets triggered. So it's, it's crazy. All right. Thank you. Good evening. Thanks, Brian. You know, you okay, so we're moving on to public comments, which anybody public? Okay, number four, old business, town hall painting. Town hall painting. The board voted, I believe it was last month, to paint the, the backside of the town hall. Correct. Request for price quotes was published August 3rd. Responses due August 19th. We received four of them. Okay. A range of 9,000 was the low bid, with a high of 17,000. Wow. 21. Just kidding. Um, the low bidder was Demetrius C. Contracting. Uh, they're out of Weymouth, and the town's operated Weymouth. Weymouth. And they were the low bid. They were the low bid. You don't have to pay for transportation. Yeah, there's a, there's a $5 per mile. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> it's a one-day job, probably. Um, so under Mass Drilling Law Chapter 149, we need to award the contract to the responsible contractor offering the lowest price. His past projects that were provided included uh, exterior painting of historic buildings and lead paint work similar to what's being done here. And the references that I spoke with were very positive. Okay. So I would recommend. Well, then I move that we award the contract to Demetrius C. of Weymouth. And these, these are, for a second, these are LED, LED certified for hazardous material and all, whatever? Um, I can double check. Um, I, he, he did, he did uh, describe his disposal plan, but I will double check to make sure that they're okay. 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 Certified, yeah. Oh. I'll double check. Good. Okay, uh, okay I'll second the motion then. Okay, Keith, I have one thing that's this is a non sequitur. On Waynesburg Road, there's a tree down over the second bridge, third bridge. It's impassable. So I've been notified of it, and we will get out there to do something, and I just haven't. Okay, just so you know. I didn't know you were. Okay, good. All right, moving on. Town Hall reuse contract negotiation. So that was, award that was yes on Town Hall painting, right? Yes. Okay, $9,000. Yes, that was. Moved, seconded, and voted on. And that will be done this year, yeah? Yes. Because okay. the, the deadline in the contract doesn't have it done this, okay. this fall. By okay. this fall. B. Town hall reuse. Um, the last meeting, the, the board voted to award the contract, um, not award the contract, <coughs> to solicit a fee proposal from um, Jones Woodson Architects. And, oh, yes. Um, 
tasked me with uh, negotiating a fee proposal with them. So we've traded proposals and counter proposals over the last week and a half. Um, and we've reached a tentative agreement um, for Jones Wissett to provide design development and construction document services for a price not to exceed $94,000, broken down as follows. Design development, that's the, the steps are conceptual design, yep. design development, yep. construction documents, and then construction administration. So the two phases we're talking about are, are design development and construction documents. So construction administration is not included in this price. Um, their prices are calculated based on an estimated construction cost. The difficulty with that is that we don't have a, um, we don't have a solid estimated construction cost because we really haven't sort gotten of a to that step. For the yeah. Yes, and part of a part of what we hope the municipal building committee can do, and the, with the joint committee that's been put together, is to finalize what that cost will be. So how are they going to do it? So what what we've asked them to do, how will they do it? Yeah. Well, they do it through through the design development phase with with Jones Wilson. Oh, okay. Um, well, what we've asked them to do is the fee for the construction documents to be readjusted based on uh, the design, design construction the design uh, modify the construction document fee based on the new project cost that the committee develops with Jones Whitsett as part of the previous phase. So there will likely be a reduction in the, in the fee. That's why, that's why it's not So this is somewhat of an iterative process here that... Yes. Okay. Not to exceed 94, but it could be less. It could be less. And what was their, res their response to the, the scope of work here that we want you to necessarily agree that with their scope? Did, is that an issue with them or... Yeah. For the for the reduced scope that they provided, right. um, that's not an issue with them. They understand that that those are things that the committee wants to speak to them about okay. and make decisions on. Okay, so we're not committed to further looking at what they propose, no. well, I, unless we want to right. go that route. But okay. My understanding is that we'll we'll start we'll start thinking everything's on the table and then design development. We can figure out. To that project cost, and then we'll, we'll reassess the fee at that point. Let me ask a question. So, so is the point that you gave them the document that Susan and Anita edited after that big meeting we had, or not? No, not, well, we didn't give them that scope. Not yet. No. Not yet right? Okay, I'm, I'm, I was um, just not understanding that. They may, I, they may have seen that. The one that the that the well, musical building is moved out. Can you share that with Yes, they have that. So Fred, yeah, Fred so was, was talking. Question. Uh, Fred was referring to um, Jones Woods have provided, Jones Woods Architect provided um, a reduced fee proposal with certain assumptions as to how we could reduce project costs making these design decisions. You and mean when they dropped their fee from 120 to 94 or, or just in the last 10 days? When they dropped it from 94 to, to, to 72,600. 72, and those are, we didn't want to go with that price because there were certain assumptions that we didn't necessarily think were true. I see. And we didn't want to be short. We didn't want to start the process short money. But we also didn't want to start the process high money. So this provides an adjustment as the process goes along. All right. Thank you. Okay. John? Yeah, I think. What Jones Woods uh, was basing their numbers on was the estimates that they did back in 2014, 2014. Um, and they just took that number and brought some of these items they mentioned, kind of deducted them to 300,000 off. But I think what the committee, or at least what I would like to see happen, is they designated another cost estimator in their RFQ. And he apparently, you know, he hasn't done anything to this point. So I think it's my desire to have the committee come up with at least alternatives, you know, to like electrical stuff, uh, HVAC stuff, and get a final thing for that cost estimator to cost out versus what may have been in the past. To see if we can do it cheaper or, or do something different. Yeah, to see what alternatives are instead okay. of going kind of a real because that. 
you know, thinking back, that cost estimate was done by the company in Hingham, and they were pretty pricey. Or, I mean, never mind. But I think that's, you know, where I would like to see it go. Well, you all should, you know, I mean, that sounds reasonable to me. Just I yeah, I think, you know, what Brian put together there is that, say the cost comes in at 800000 then their 35% of that times 11.9% comes up with the design figure or the uh, construction document cost. Right, which would be less than the 60000 Yeah, in any event it's more, then it's capped at the 60 or so would be back you know, where it is yeah. now. And, and I think this approach is good because what they proposed, the 72.6, was kind of bottom line. They even said, if you want major cost changes or additional work or whatever, we're going to charge you extra for that. So then you'd have to come back to a committee, either building committee or the select board for additional money if we agreed with the 72.6. So I guess now we've got, it seems like a cushion if we can go up to the 94. So we're going to work with the ceiling rather than the floor, which makes a lot of sense. Right. Yes. So <laughs> the floor is 34. I guess we kind of agree the floor is 34 to start, and then it's a, the ceiling. But then so the decision floor, right? Just so I'm clear on it. Yeah. So that's. I guess I'm not very clear on what that is going to give us. That's going to get us through the design development phase. That's going to get us right to before we do the construction documents. So after our input and so forth. Right. Yeah. That'll be the that'll be the that'll be the, the, the stage of the project where what you talk so we about. We have the meetings and so forth, yeah. and then once the, the design is final, then they would enter into the cost or the construction documents based on the new cost. <coughs> right. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, what are we approving tonight? Just the thirty-four or the ninety-four? Um. I would prefer that 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 you prove up to up to the ninety four thousand, and it'll be it'll be it'll be spelled out design development thirty four thousand construction documents not to exceed sixty thousand, okay. um, with not to exceed sixty thousand, actually, and it's going to say the actual fee to be determined and who based will, upon the okay the calculation and, based upon the the new project cost estimates, and who will I guess accept the new cost estimates. It needs to be agreed upon by the committee. Done by the building, this is the yeah. building committee. The contract will have that language. Okay. That it's, the joint it's, committee. The joint committee, yeah. Um, the, the, the new project cost estimate will not be solely decided by the, by the architect. Right. We'll want control over an agreement as to what the new project cost is going to be. Because in a sense, they could just set their fee without any input. Right. So. Right. It's, I've had some, I, I guess, thoughts and, and comments on this, the committee, it's, municipal building committee is responsible for basically the project and the historical commission has kind of advisory to us, providing input comments and appreciate everything they've done. To, to get us this far with it, but the final, to me, the final decision comes from the Municipal Building Committee. That's a committee that was that was uh, set up by the select board here many years ago. Members mm -hmm. were appointed into that. The Historical Commission, I don't know if, if we've appointed members to that or not, but we've never so designated a joint committee with the both having I don't know, equal shares or, or constituting quorum or whatever. To me, it's still Municipal Building Committee. It's, it's controlling this project as the final say. Uh, again, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not downplaying the role of the Historic Commission. You're, you've been great so far, and you're, and, you're, and you're helping us a lot. And, and we're listening to you. And we're considering your input, as you, as you, as you well know. But I think it comes down to the well, eight members of the Municipal Building Committee are going to decide on the future of this project. 
or I recommend. Think if, if, if I'm, if I'm a, I'm just a member of the historical commission. We don't have the chair isn't here. Probably not. Um, I'm probably not going to have any idea that you were planning to bring this up, but I think it appears to me that we've been meeting together since November, and I think we've made a great deal of progress right. working together. Right, yes. And, I, you know, even though not everybody has the yes. same point of view, and we actually don't vote as, you know, people vote as individuals. Right. Um, the advantage, none of us are looking for more meetings to attend. The advantage, I think, to having a historical commission play an active role is that well, I'd say an, an official advantage and a kind of informal advantage. The official advantage is that in order for any proposal for support for the town hall project to go to the CPC, it has to be made under the historical umbrella, and the historical commission has to endorse it, and it will simply be more effective for the historical commission to, to be involved and, right. and be able to be actively um, supporting it. The other um, fact, I think that's true, and I'd be happy to have you um, contradict me because it's a lot of work, is that I think just by the accident of who is on the two committees, if we're going to look for outside funding sources, we have more experience and, and writing capacity, which is part of what has to be done on the Historical Commission. And again, we're going to do a better job if we're involved. Yeah, if you're I, talking I, about authority, I don't have any way, and rather than involvement, that's, I, I, I can't argue, I mean, I don't actually even have an opinion about that. <laughs> well, I think John mentioned alternatives, and one of, one of the issues that we're going to be facing going forward, and, and Donna just mentioned it, is that a lot of the alternatives are going to depend on the amount of grant funding we get. And it could be anywhere from a third to a half of the total project. And I think the historical commission's input on that is going to be huge. And a lot of this money won't necessarily come from the town. So I think since, since we have more expertise in, in applying for these grants, and because we're not necessarily playing with town money, there's a lot to be said for, for both both uh, committees uh, I mean, being involved in the final decision. I don't think Fred's arguing with both committees being involved. I think he's making a legal point about who has the legal um, authority to recommend to the select board, maybe, the final say. And um, I guess going back to the precedent set, according to Fred, I'm not, I, I don't remember. But if the building committee was the committee appointed by the select board to oversee and recommend to the select board what should happen, and it's since then incorporated the historical commission as co-members of the building committee, making it a joint committee, then, uh, you know, it, it seems to me there may have been some I think formally, it's probably the authority is, as Fred says, still with the original building committee, but informally and over time, uh, it's become more of a joint committee. And so the question is, well, who has the authority? Is the joint committee or the building committee? And it seems to me, either way you do it, the historical commission is certainly going to be instrumental in making the recommendations. And I can't imagine the building committee, whoever they are, I've forgotten who's on it now, would go against the wishes of the historical commission. But I don't know. So if this is the issue, then we should come to a decision about. Well, it's it's not that we're not considering what the historic commission is saying, and and I realize they're probably the only ones of this joint committee looking at funding right now or grants or whatever you want to call it. Uh, and I appreciate that. I think they're doing a great job of that. That's something that, that is definitely needed. But, and, and we're going to do, the, the building committee is going to do all we can to make sure that we get 
the necessary information to apply for the grants that the historical commission says are available or will be available, or whatever. But I think there's some decisions that need to be made on the design aspects of of the building. Now, funding, yes, we we I think we need to rely on the historic commission, see what you come up with, and there's other funding sources that will also go through the building committee. Uh, or if CPA goes through a historic commission, that's fine. But but there are some design decisions, and maybe we get into cost options, whatever, that to me are more appropriate that the building committee make the decisions on that because that's what we were set up for originally to do, is, is to figure out what to do with the town hall, the most economical, feasible way to accomplish what we want at the town hall. That's a charge to the building committee. And we uh, say it again, we're not excluding the historic commission. We appreciate all your efforts and want you to continue. We look forward to you continuing. We're not closing the door on you today. Isn't, isn't one of the problems, though, that um, in order to get CPA money, if, if the municipal, that the building committee wanted designs that were contrary to rules around historical um, preservation, then the funding wouldn't happen. So that it seems like, it, in a way, if it, you'd have to consider that in in terms of what the municipal um, building committee wanted to do. Right. Well, certainly, we would, we would listen to that argument, and and uh, there may be times where the, the the grant money is not worth the extra expense. Fred, um, I wonder if uh, again. I uh, first of all, to answer your question, the members of the Historical Commission are appointed by the Select Board. Okay. Uh, just that you said that a while ago, and I just wanted to get back to that. At least I was appointed by the Select Board. I'm assuming everybody okay. was appointed by the Select Board. Um, I wonder, given that the Building Committee has eight members and three of you are in the room, whether uh, are, are, are you representing your own point of view here, or are you representing the building committee's point of view? Uh, I guess I'm both. And, and the reason I brought it up is because Brian said that it would be a joint committee decision on what we agree with the cost. And I, I guess my personal feeling and also uh, I, I don't know the committee itself whether everybody agrees with that, but my personal feeling is that I, I think it's the building's committee responsibility well my my feeling is that I would I would hope that the building committee and the historic commission would agree on the costs so yeah. that the select board could have their recommendations from each committee and we'd have a unified uh, effort here and I, I really I don't I don't imagine that there would be a, uh, a a difference between the two boards because you're working together for the same purpose. Right. Um, so, but there are some design issues that will come up, and, and maybe the the uh, Jones Winslet will help us decide based on whatever costs they come up with. But there are some design things that we need to decide on. And, sure. Uh, that's mostly where I'm coming from. John. Yeah. Maybe I missed it, but was there ever a meeting, a select board meeting? Where you actually said you are not only joint committee. Uh, I don't know that there was a formal no. legal pronouncement. I thought it was just that you would have a joint meeting. Yeah, meeting. Right. Meeting, yeah. yeah. Agreed. 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 But I don't know, you know, legality wise, you know, the way the building committee was initially set up, whether there's any impact on what Fred's bringing up, I guess, may be a valid point. Yeah. Or what well, the charge is. If, if, if the if the historic commission came up with a different plan than the building committee, then I'd say we've got work to do. I wouldn't vote on it, uh, either recommended by either committee. If the other committee didn't go along with it, so I would only vote for recommendation. I don't know about Jonathan or Fred, but if the two committees don't agree, then I don't want to go ahead with it. That's that's my feeling because I think they both have a lot to offer and we're. We're both trying to uh, achieve the same goals, it seems. 
Uh, well, and I, I will say just to complicate the matters, not in a voting way, but in that <coughs> one of the things we've been talking about in the historical commission, because we do have other business beyond the town hall and meet independently, is that we need to engage the cultural commission of the town. We're talking about repurposing the sure. town hall as a community center, and that's another eight members of the community who need to be involved in that. Not necessarily well, that's design, right. but because we want more buy-in, you know. To that's to right. That's right. The select board has the uh, duty and responsibility to take these recommendations by whatever committees that bear on this project and make a decision accordingly. So, you know, I think okay. this is one of maybe three. We heard from three different committees. I would hope they would all agree. That's my fantasy anyway. And I would think that I recommend whatever comes out of this process with Jones Winslet, I guess, I would like to see a recommendation from the Historical Commission. I guess go to, if you're going for CPA funding to that committee or to the Building Committee, that's your recommendation. And then also a recommendation from the Municipal Building Committee. Uh, Fred, I, I just want to make so, sure I understand you. Are you suggesting that we stop meeting together? No, or are you no. literally talking about a point of legality when it comes to yeah. a, a point of difference? Right, that, the second. Okay. Scenario. Yes. 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 No. Okay. But because we've had other joint meetings where one committee will recommend to the other, and then the other committee discusses and votes and, and agrees. Oh, we're and not going to make Jones Witsit meet with two different committees. No. Right? No, 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 no. 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 Okay. So, for the purposes of this is just a contractual matter. Yes. For the purposes of deciding on the, the new project, the new cost estimate for the project, which will which will which will affect the, the reduction in the fee, if any. Yeah. Um, who is the appropriate committee? Who is the appropriate committee or board to do that? Well, I think the building committee. Mr. Building Committee? I would think. I would second that. Okay. Okay. Shall we move on to office build-out? Town office build out. We'll go with the entry into the contract for not to exceed thank you for thousand. Thank you all. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. And good luck. What? Are we good entering into the contract for not to exceed ninety four thousand? I believe we are. Yes. Are we? Yes. We are. Okay. Great. Yes. So you just to clarify, you sign all the contract documents? Or the chair does? Yes. Okay. I will prepare for a signature, make sure everything is. So the chair will for the 34 when we're done? Is there going to be two, two phases here? Paying them, one for 34, then one for the, the remaining um, 1094? Well, we can't. We haven't talked about how we're going to structure their payment. Oh, okay, but, okay. Yeah. But it will okay. include it will include both up to 94,000. Okay, fine. Yeah. Okay, so. Um, now it's really empty. Town office build out, tenant town space. Just, just quickly, um, in terms of the build out for, for this building, I have been asked to pull together the start of our request for qualifications to begin the process of working on a final design for the build out in relation to SCEMS. Wow. Town offices. Yeah. Um, and if I'm to continue down that path, that's up to the board, obviously, the, the process will be similar to, to the one taken for the town hall reuse. Okay. That was a, a request made to me by the representative to the select board from the, the, the Board of Oversight of SCAMS. So, um, so where are we? Uh, just I missed something. Okay. In, in this whole evolutionary process. Um, I'll, I'll try to sum up what I viewed on FCAT YouTube. Okay. Um, I didn't unless see our it. cameraman was at the meeting and he can film me at all, <laughs> all the way. But um, there are there is one proposal from the town of Deer, uh, the select board member from the town of Deerfield, and there is the proposal for the ambulance service to move here. Okay. And my understanding is that the the proposal from the town of Deerfield, the gentleman was asked to firm that up in a month from. So, so that at the next Board of Oversight meeting. Which is when? Um, it is the... September 15th. The second Thursday? Third Thursday? Third, third Thursday, which I believe is the 15th. 15th yeah. Okay. 15th. Um, 
and at the same time it was asked that my interpretation of, of the conversation is that the town of Whaley would begin the process of putting together a request for qualifications if the a board of oversight I don't know if I'm characterizing this correctly but if they didn't accept or like or want to pursue the proposal in Deerfield so we're a fallback or uh, I would say we're a parallel track we're a parallel track yes. so then uh, we I'm probably not the best person to be to be describing this but probably the best person that's sitting here uh, yeah I, I wasn't there either and I don't think John wasn't there either right we all saw the video and yeah they're they're coming up with uh, Kip Kamosa is coming up with uh, a proposal to develop a new building on a site next to where they are now, north side the of fire the district. fire district, right. which is so far is is going to be comparable to them moving moving here. Uh, and so they would there. be building a building from scratch. Yes, that would be yes as the same price as moving into an already existing building. It's possible, yes. That's miraculous. Yeah. Well, he's he's trying to get private funding, you know, like donation write-offs type things. Is my understanding from some of the major players in the area. Oh, and so we could do that too for our building. Yeah. Well, but you know, the problem is in watching that video. There's a lot of discrepancy that was presented, purporting to be from the town of Wakeley's proposal that. You know, one time it's twenty thousand dollars for the year, and next to now it's thirty-two thousand, four dollars or five dollars a square foot, and then it's eight dollars a square foot. Includes the whole thing is, is to me, it where, wasn't consistent. Where were those numbers coming from, John? Mm -hmm. I saw yeah. some of that video. Yeah, and yeah. he even come up with a, what three hundred fifty thousand to. Remodel here, and I don't know what that looks like or where you got that from. Or well, three, three, we do have numbers. If you think detail. back, you know, yeah. HAI did give us numbers right. on potential, I think, 1,300 square foot build out for skins along the right. wall, each either the back wall or the garage wall. And I think what Jonathan added to that was the 12 foot addition to the front of the garage to come up with, you know, 300,000. But another big mistake that was uh, mentioned in that meeting, Jonathan said it correctly. He said, yes, you know, we would consider floating the bond to fund that build out and the addition and have it paid off over whatever the term of the lease is. Now, one of the members of the Deerfield board did some quick calculating and he said, well, if we figure 400,000 over 60 months, if we were there five years, he came up with a figure of 550 a month, but if you divide 400,000 by 60, that's 6,666 dollars a month. So I think there's a lot of confusion from what I got you know, looking at that video, and, and I think it came down in the end that Jonathan said we'll put out an RFP, you know, to get some of these figures firmed up within the next month because that's kind of the deadline they gave. Uh, Kip Camosa to come up with his solid numbers, and he said he felt he could do that. But I think the board here is going to decide, well, was it $8 a square foot that we provided in the RFP when those came out, plus utilities? That was another thing. Well, did it include utilities or not include utilities? At one point, Jonathan said that we don't know what the figures are yet because we haven't been here in a year. We don't know what the utilities are going to be. So once we figure out what the utilities are, we'll take that, divide it into the square foot cost or the square foot amount that schedule would end up. And, and that would be a portion every month. Yeah. Well, that doesn't make sense. We already got an estimate for that anyway, I think, before. So. But I thought through the process, we all, always talked about separating their gas whatever they end up with, right. have a separate gas meter, a separate electric meter, and yep. they pay their own yep. cable. Yep. And it was $8 a square foot. So yep. I don't know where all these other numbers are all of a sudden come back either. up. Yeah, I, I think that, you know, if, if Jonathan's going promoting that, it, it's not representing our board here to me. I mean, it's never come up as a discussion <coughs> item here that we're reducing our cost 
just to try to get scams to come here. Well, plus, you know, we provided the same numbers to the school, school department. Yeah. That was just here, you know, we That's said, right. we told the same numbers to them. Well, perhaps what we ought to do is send, send Boo uh, our numbers that we approve of and have it in writing and well, not have it come out in a, a meeting, you know. Yeah, I mean, it is in writing because we put it in the RFP. Right. You know, which they re ultimately rejected, but those are the numbers yeah. that we provided to them. I guess right. we could resend that one cost page that was in the RFP and talks about it. A cover letter in that one page, I guess. Just to clarify and confirm, yeah. these are the numbers that represent yeah. our... So this is what the rent per square foot would be, Yeah. plus utility. Just, yeah. The other thing to consider there is, okay, if we put on another 700 and... Uh, 44 square feet to the garage, you know, is that going to become part of the square footage that we're calculating that cost on? Well, I think it, a garage is not the same as an office space. Yeah, so there it, should be it some. would be minimal yeah. addition. Right. But something else to think about is one of the members of the Board of Oversight brought up, say, okay, Wakely, you know, we're going to spend three fifty to 400000 improving your building and say we do leave in five years. Are you considering any give back? Yeah. And Kip Camosa actually addressed that and says normally if a commercial tenant comes into a space and renovates it to their needs and leaves, the next commercial tenant that comes in may rip it all up because it doesn't fit their needs and they rebuild it to what? So I think, you know, whatever ends up being done, Gets done in its stays. Right. As far as it's going the RFP route, you know, they even threw out a figure at that meeting of, you know, if you go to the RFP and you hire somebody, uh, they threw out a figure ten percent of the four hundred thousand you would probably pay for design concepts or whatever or cost estimate. So that's forty thousand dollars that, that Waitley would have to pay to do this design for skims when, well, when we don't even know if they're coming here. And that's almost comparable to two years of rent. We're giving them two years of rent no, free. I, I, don't, I don't think we can do that. I, I think if, if, if we spend that money, we have to get it back somehow. We, first, we need a commitment before we even do that. Before we right, but if, right. Well, yeah. That was addressed you know, with the payback to match the term of the lease. Yeah. So with a five-year lease, and they pay off that, say, 400 over five years. So they're mm -hmm. paying 80 grand a year. Mm -hmm. If it's a 10-year lease, well, then it's half of that. But I think that's been the consistent language about if we blow the bond, then it would be paid off over whatever the term of the lease is. Unless you remember something different. But, but yeah, they said at the <coughs> next meeting on the 15th that, that uh, Deerfield people would, would propose their their building and costs, and I guess make a decision then as to right, which one whether they want to go with theirs or or with Whaley's proposal. But then the next step is to go to Deerfield Select Board to approve that w w recommendation, whatever comes out of out of Skims, and then once Deerfield Select Board say they approve that. Then the three towns have to vote to accept that as well. I guess so. The relocation. Yeah. So we're looking months down the road. That's right. Before we do that. Well, I think you know to get back to the, the root of the first part of the discussion here for the town of Waitley is build out. I think if we can get somehow just that dividing wall up, like where the temporary walls up wall was up last winter. That way, you know, whatever happens on that side of the wall happens. But we control the heating and air conditioning in our space that we're using. So even if we could get a contractor to put up, a, you know, a metal studded 5-8 sheetrock on one side wall there to divide the heating for now, then we can always, you know, go back in later and add a door or whatever we need to do. It's not a big process, but we need to get that space divided with some kind of a permanent Wow. Right. Okay. So really, do we decide do we do something temporary or do we go uh, something that's longer term for that one well, wall? Well, that wall has always been 
The full wall. Full wall. It's going to go right. right up to the soffit that's currently in between the two right. spaces now. So that can be added in there, sheetrocked, you know, jointed up, you know, just like any right. wall with where it meets the ceiling. All right. And it's done. Right. But we also had a proposal for what you call these partitions or whatever. Yeah. Movable but that's, walls. Those are, you know, all the interior eight foot partitions that were in the $43,000 proposal. That yeah. can be done anytime. You know, without impacting really that wall. Okay. So you think so that, that common wall, I think, is really what we ought to concentrate on before that. the uh, heavy heating season. Okay. Yeah. You have my next uh, my next point. That's right, Dom. Just yeah. covered it. Thanks. Is is that gonna would that cost less than ten thousand oh. dollars to do that? So we yeah, could get three. You just, if you put up the studs and sheetrock, you yeah. really don't need wiring or anything right. at this point. I don't think. If you do, there's plenty of circuits on those existing posts that are currently there between the spaces anyway. So I would think it'd be a fairly simple process, you know, going before the building inspector and asking them and then putting it out to a local contract bid for, you know, as long as it's under 10. It's really only like 70 feet of wall, maybe 80 feet, with a little jog in there. Yeah. Okay, but how much longer would it, would it take if we did all the walls in there, all the partitions for the town offices, town space. What are we looking at, another month or two? Is it well, that, I guess, you know, would depend on, you would have to put that out, I don't think, right, for an IRP. P, right. And the company, one of the companies that gave us that bid and came out and showed us the product and so forth over there, um, I don't know what their build-out schedule is. Okay. I want to say back then it was like a month to six weeks ahead. Okay. But do you want me to follow up with that company to get a kind of a time frame or? Would we save anything by doing it all at once? No, one because contract? that's, those are two separate, two separate walls. I mean, actually that proposal, you are correct, you know, that proposal did include that 10 foot wall as a modular wall. Right. But I'm thinking that it doesn't really matter whether it's a modular wall or not because it will always be dividing those two heating and air conditioning systems that we want individual control of. So if we can put it up as a permanent wall right now, let's do it. Yeah. Which one? The 10 foot wall is which one? Going down the hallway? So it's going down the hallway. Yeah. Well, the, as long as Lynn is, you know, firm as to where that's safe or the vault is going, yep. you know, we've got to partition off just the hallway there to have access to the janitorial closet and a door into the other space and then come back to that common wall and go right straight down. Okay, I would like to point out, and John, we've had this conversation in the revised plan where the protect frontier come in here. Um, we did lose 300 feet of storage space. Um, which I agreed to, to accommodate in a, to the uh, plan to, to, to get both entities here. With now Frontier not coming here, I personally would like to see that 300 be restored to us because that is valuable storage space we're going to need for, for the current and future use. So I would hate to see us kind of squeeze into um, sure. the, the proposed space and not have what we need. So I'm, I'm would suggest that we do need to maybe sit down with skims or have a, a meeting where we're all on the same page in terms of what the <coughs> needs are and i would suggest our needs should probably take priority i think so is, is that 300 on on that side of the wall or the original the plan side? had had the vault and 300 feet of storage space kind of coming up the side in like an l shape right on the far side on the corner. far wall right, far wall okay and we lost that 300 feet with the revised plan to, to bring frontier in here right, but I, i'd really like to see that restored but what's the current proposal now the vault is on this corner over here with no with no the, the 300 feet yeah i mean the vault can be moved yeah moved anywhere wherever really yeah. Yeah. well we do have yeah. you know like 82 feet of space from you know the windows all the way down so i think we've got to really analyze what our meeting space requirements are and then if uh, Cynthia and the assessors move from the other side of the wall here out to the window area you know we got 500 or yeah 500 which we have people who there. want access we have a number of committees that that's has been thought of as a shared space between conservation commission planning board zoning board animal control 
that they, they have asked for space so that they can stop working at home and out of their home. Yeah. Well, that was part of the space out front here, no, too. No, that was, back, that was back here. Well, we can draw it up any way you want. We, I think the bottom line is that everybody needs to figure out how much space they need. Right. Then we can kind of figure yeah. out yeah. where it fits in and go from there. Yeah, so let's, let's take back the 300 square feet, certainly. So we're not at a point yet for a final plan to do the build out in I wouldn't temper it doesn't sound like it. No, I think no. the only thing that pretty much everybody agrees on, and even this 300 square feet could be added in on the other side of that wall fairly easily. Um, it's just reconfiguring the, the direction the ball goes and have the storage area next to it, I don't think it's a big deal. But no. to get that wall up, I think, is a priority right now. And it's not going to, you know, say we're never going to have that 300 square feet back in that area. It's perfectly doable, but I think getting well, the, the wall up. Yeah, the purpose of getting the wall up is to isolate the HVAC spaces. Yeah, I mean, you know what the difference was last year. It was just a temporary one on the ground. You know, there was, what, 100, 115,000 was approved at town meeting for this? So yes. all these renovations would come out of that budget. Yes. Okay. Well, maybe we should go with the uh, the higher wall first to separate the two until we decide what the final office space is. Yeah, I, I thought, I think John's plan has merit the, to wall off the skims, yeah. this alleged skim space from the rest of the space yeah. so we can save on energy costs yeah. and have it not temporary but not you know full-blown double-sided taped wired wall yeah, right. should be enough to keep most of the heat on this side and you know meanwhile we wait for skims to arrive at some yeah. sort of recommendation Okay, so I guess we recommend, Brian, you go ahead with that For the proposal to, to put up a, a wall to separate the two offices up to the ceiling. Yep. Just straight down and possibly under a $10,000 yep. bid price and see what proposals you get. And yep. meanwhile, we ought, to, we ought to get as clear as we can about our build-out space so that we can wall that off as well. Yeah. But if there were to be done in order, you'd probably do the bigger wall first and then the... Yeah, yeah. when we were looking at that 300 square feet, I don't know, we were considering, you know, where it surely was in this office that we're currently using as another meeting room. Because, you know, using that meeting room, this meeting room, and the small meeting room there that I think Lynn uses for interviews and stuff, and you probably use next to your office. You know, how much more meeting space do we need down there? And can we accommodate maybe half and half over here, half storage, half meeting, which would still be like a 13 by 20, 24 feet, 23 feet? You know, like 23 feet here. You know, so 12 by 23 feet is pretty good meeting space. Okay, well, uh, I'd like to move on and yep you know, refine this process in the next couple of weeks, but maybe work on that wall, getting that yeah, wall up. First, yeah. 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 And then could we could we ask that John and Brian and some Mary Ellen maybe get together and come up with a final plan for the build out in the next uh, what, month or two? A month. Next month? Yeah, I mean, I can get stuff drawn up pretty quick. So. Yeah, come to some to come to the board here with a sure. with a recommended plan. Yeah. Yeah. Zach Zach from Skims finally got me a sketch oh, of my what, what he wanted. Yeah. And two hours later I sent him the plan. All right. So yeah. we're getting there. Now all we have to yeah. do is get him in here. That's easier said than done. Okay. okay. Let's move on. Complete streets. We talked about that. We did. We just talked about that. Is there anything more to do on that? I don't think so. Town administrator update. I assume there isn't much to update. A um, couple things. Um, Wendy Peppercorn, the library director, has resigned. Oh, no. Effective September 17th. Wow. To pursue a new job as a children's librarian. I'm not sure where. In Haynesville. 
In Haydenville. Haydenville. In Haydenville. Yeah. Haydenville still one of our librarians. Jeez, you can't keep a librarian. Um, so the library trustees will be looking to fill that position. Mm -hmm. and I believe that you said they've had six. six Jeez, wow. Yeah, six resumes submitted so far. Okay. Keith and I will be meeting with the town of Williamsburg on uh, this Wednesday to discuss the Haydenville Road Mountain Street project to try to keep that I'm sure you will. moving forward. Um, Forever forward. <clears throat> quick update on the community compact program, if you recall what that is. Vaguely, yeah. um, that's the that's the state's effort to enter into compacts with municipalities to make them operate more efficiently. And the board had voted on two items over the summer and when I went to apply for this was a little while back when I went to fill out the application online they said wait till we get the FY17 applications up so we are still waiting for that okay just as a heads up and um, before the town administrator myself under the terms of my contract I have a three-month evaluation that will be coming up at the end of July, August, at the end of September. So I'm going to be sending out performance evaluation forms. Okay. And the goal would be to discuss those at the end of September, so September 26th meeting. So just a heads up on that. All right. And we, you signed the cemetery contract just an hour ago, so that work should be getting underway fairly soon. That's the, the restoration, restoration of the stones at the center cemetery. Right. Good. New business. And I'm going to ask that we table this. Okay. Um, I was not able to talk with um, the representative from MDAR, Mass Department of Agricultural Resources, about this. They were on vacation pretty much from our last meeting till through today. All right. When we received the letter. So. Okay. I just clarify something, backing up a little on the. You were asked to do the RFP for. Scams for this building. If we decided it was our decision not to move forward with that right now. So, so here's so here's a question. It's it'll it'll likely be an RFQ. RFQ. Um, so, uh, until until we go ahead and issue that and award the contract, the only costs incurred will be administrative costs. Your time. Your costs? my time. Yeah. And is FERCOG, would FERCOG be involved again in that, or not? If we wanted to pay them, they could be. Well, okay. Um, I think... Do we need to pay them? We don't need them, do we? Um, I, I don't think so at this point. Yeah. Um, the request for qualifications, most of it is in... Uh, so what the, the, I just, I'm not a little, I mean, I, I hate to prolong things here, but it seems like an RFQ is an extra hoop to jump through in the process. What we really want is a proposal and an idea of how much it costs. Because when you ask for an RFQ, you're getting qualifications from contractors. And you know, if we asked for an RFP, we would get proposals from contractors, and I assume we'd get references, or we'd require references. So we'd kill two birds with one stone with an RFP, and we'd have some idea of how much it might cost. Um, yeah. Plus, what they're proposing to actually do. So, why do we do an RFQ? And the, not an RFP? the RFP would be to to accomplish what the actual the actual build up. It would it would in essence be a conceptual design with a price tag, right? We are proposing to do the following services. Right. We, um, well, I guess an RFQ would be, or an RFP would be, from an architectural point of view, would be, we are proposing to Excellent. work with a client to come up with a design for, for space and an estimate of how much that design might cost. That, that would be an estimate. But in this case, we have the design that the client wants. Right. So, so... So I agree with what you're saying. Yeah. So a proposal would be more in order than right. an RFQ, right? Yes? Yeah, no. uh, our RFPs, yeah. RFPs are, are generally when you know what you want to do. Which we basically do. Yeah. 
I mean, we don't know maybe the color of the outlets, right. but we probably want ivory because they're always yeah. ivory, but you know. Well, that, it, t it tells you if the <coughs> qualifications, I guess, of the proposer, and I guess you would get the same thing with, with a bid proposal too. Sure. The qualifications, you see that too. And you know, it's not gonna be a fly-by-night company that's no. gonna submit something. No. And, if, and if we ask for references, we're essentially getting qualifications. Yes. I just think it's another step, and I, I want to get this thing done. I want to, you know, I'm getting a little. So, so whatever the appropriate path is to that, that's what. Okay. I'll pursue. Okay. Uh, I, I will. I will I'll have a discussion with Andy after uh, Yeah, I, did, I just. We really so, need to get settled, and we need to get scams dealt with, or we need to do something else. So, are we coming up with a with a with a price for a skims build out? Then is that what you're saying? We're going to advertise for proposals and bid prices. Well, I was mainly thinking of of, of our build out, not Skin's build out. Okay, no, I was my whole discussion. Are you talking about our build out? What are you talking about? Huh? The, the Fred was talking about this this <laughs> Skin's build out. The Skin's build, build out. out. All right. That's why no, that's why you said about RFQ. No. No, RFP no. RFP for us, yes. Okay, RFP for us. Okay. RFP for SCEMS, well, do, if we know enough from SCEMS to get a proposal, I'd go for, with that too. Yeah, but like, like I'm saying, we have no commitment yet. And it's months down the road, and how long is it going to take to get this out? A, a, a month? Six weeks? I mean, what, we, we waited all this time. We could get it out. Not done. We could get it out fairly quickly. I'm just, I'm just concerned. We're gonna have, they're gonna have a meeting on the what, September 15th, yeah. and they're gonna say, well, we haven't heard from Waitley, so we're gonna go with Deerfield because they. Well, can. I think the way it was left at the end of that August 18th meeting was that okay, Kip, you've got until September 15th to bring us something solid, solid numbers, solid <coughs> measurements, et cetera. Yeah. If you don't and nothing flies, then we're going to Waitley. And wait, and, and wait, wait, why don't you get the ball rolling? Well, Kip asked, you know, Jonathan for some numbers from us, which they already have. Yeah. All right, so all they're going to decide on the 15th is the relative merits of the two sets of numbers. Well, I think primarily on, on Deerfield's numbers, on Kip's Is numbers. it going to work or not? If it's a no, then they start negotiating. But if it's, he's got numbers and they look plausible, then, then we have to compare our numbers and their numbers. Well, I think their view on that is if he's got the commitments in writing and solid numbers and it's doable, they're going to vote to do it. Even though ours might be cheaper? The way he's proposing it, there's no way it's going to be cheaper. Because? He's going to have Yankee Candle pay for it? Uh, we don't know. He's not saying who or when or how much, and that's his ball game. And well, okay, so if he comes up with, let's say it's going to cost uh, to build a new building $200,000, which would be miraculous, um, we can just say, well, okay, go for it, because there's no way we can yeah, manage but that. We need to know the answer. Right. So we, as a kind of way, we can proceed. So we're just, we're basically then waiting to hear what he comes yeah, up with. It's only yeah. a little more than two weeks away. Yeah. So I would say my suggestion is wait, wait. before we put out an yeah. RFP or whatever yeah. Yeah. for that and see what happens at that meeting. Well, I hope for the sake of the taxpayers of all four towns, he comes up with a free building with no rent. Let's see. Well, his proposal is pretty much that. Well, that would that be pretty. These, all these people will fund it and get it built. Sounds like and, a wall I've heard about. Yeah, and the uh, the only expenses would be the cost to run the building. Well, more power to us, him. And, and see, at that meeting, Jonathan made a point that what they're proposing, Skim's board has never seen it. It's only Deerfield people who've <laughs> seen what he's proposing. And that's why they asked at the next meeting to come up with that for with some definitive numbers, but, but they also said, well, Waitley, where's your definitive numbers? If we're going to compare, 
and I don't think we need to do anything more than what we've already done. We'll give I, it a I, I, they've, they've got plenty of information. I, I, think, think, I think so too. Okay, we're good. So we won't do anything until that sounds good. Until after Skim's meeting. Any more business? Or can I move to adjourn? We can go home. I shall move. Second. All right. Thank you, everybody. Okay.